China switches up its anti-spy laws. So what does that mean for businesses? Hello, I'm Leanna Byrne and you're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report live from the BBC World Service. Thanks for joining us this morning. China's updated anti-espionage law takes effect today. It now includes collaborating with spy organizations, conducting cyber attacks and unauthorized obtaining of sensitive information. Global businesses fear more scrutiny and the prospect of routine activities being caught out by the law. Here to explain is Kerry Allen, the BBC's China media analyst. It's been around since 2014, but it was amended back in April and it comes into effect today. And this law refines the definition of what China constitutes as espionage activities. Um, so, yeah, there are amendments to this. Um, also, um, today, there's, uh, there's a lot of media interest in uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary coming to China. It comes on the heels of the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, visiting the country. Do you think that there is room for cooperation considering the tensions between the US and China at the moment. I do think so. Yes. I mean, you'll you will see in state media a lot of newspapers in China that there is still a window of opportunity to repair those relations. Um, but when Blinken visited, there was a lot of media reporting on how officials in China had said that ties were at an all-time low. So the only way is up, really. There is hope in that way. But at the same time, in state media, you'll often see cynicism towards visits. So people are asking, why is she coming to the country? And uh, the Global Times, for example, which is China's most prominent national newspaper, says the trip is likely to be motivated by issues around the US debt ceiling. On the Chinese espionage laws, what do you think that US companies need to look out for in this? What are the potential implications for them? When it comes to espionage in China, there are very, very strict punishments. Only in May, a U.S. citizen was uh, was given a life imprisonment sentence. There are concerns for companies if there are tenuous links to obtaining sensitive information that, yeah, you could potentially be implicated in this. There's been a lot of media on um, the consultancy firm Capvision. There were raids on their offices in May. And police had accused Catvision of hiring consultancy experts to obtain sensitive data. So, I mean, that's an example in point. Newspapers are saying that they feel that this is a smear. They they say that uh, that actually this is preferential to to foreign businesses. That it just kind of closes the gap because uh, because yeah, this law has been around for the last nine years, and there have been advancements in technologies and new businesses. So this is just a way of updating things they see. They, 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 there's a feeling that Western media from Chinese officials, Western media try to uh, to turn this into kind of cynicism about working with the Chinese market. They want to say, no, you're welcome now. Zero COVID measures have, have ended, but don't see this as anything negative. This is a positive in, in as it says, the new era. Perfect. Well, the BBC's China media analyst, Kerry Allen, thank you so much for joining us on Marketplace. Thank you.